Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to this tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to code this feature, remember me on your website. That way your users can log in once and be logged in for maybe a week or a month and then their, their session can expire then. That will avoid them logging in and out all the time. Okay, so the way this thing works is the simple login page here and I can log in to my account. And if I tick the remember me thingy here, it means even when I close this and come back, it will still remember who I am. Now, I can't really show that now because uh, I would need to delete the cookie or wait for some time for my session to expire just so I can show you this. But it actually works just fine. I log out. I'm not allowed to come back here, but if I had not logged out and let it run uh, its course, it would have logged me out eventually because the session would have expired and I'll need to log in. But in this case, the remember me thing works to keep you logged in for a long time. So let's see how we can get that going. Now, in order to follow along here, you must at least know the basics of PHP and HTML and CSS and the like. So to start with, let's make sure that our server is running as intended. So I'm just gonna load ZAMP control panel. Okay, there we go. And let's click start on Apache and MySQL. Now, in case you don't have ZAMP here, just download it from the internet. Just look for ZAMP download and install that because we're, we're using this because it comes with a server and a database, two things that we need. And also it comes with PHP, which we also need. So install ZAMP. If you're using a Mac, of course, install MAMP instead, and then start these two services. Once you are done, uh, open the control panel and do that. Okay. So once this is done, uh, we can now begin. So use a text editor of your choice. I'm using Sublime Text. And of course we need our, um, uh, we need our, our our website to be in a very specific folder. So in my case, it's in drive C, ZAMP, htdocs, and then I created a folder called read, remember me as one word. Now the folder name can be anything as long as you put it inside the htdocs folder, or if you have a different server, you can put it in the server folder, the public server folder, which sometimes could be www. Okay, so once we are done with that and our server is running here, uh, we can now begin. So here I want to create, um, first of all, let me open my text editor, which is this one sublime text. And I want to move my remember me folder into there. So I'm just going to drag and drop it there. That's great. That way I can create files from here. So let me create a new file. This is the only file we're going to have in here. So I'm just going to call it index.php like that. Okay. So of course, let's put our PHP tags over here and close them so we can add some HTML at the bottom. So now I'm going to add HTML doc type and let's just call the title, remember me like so. Okay, so type everything that you see here and we are good to go. Now we're going to need a form, of course, so that the user can actually log in. So inside the body here, let's put a div, okay, like that. Uh, this could be a form. Actually, let's change it to a form like this. And let's give it a method of post. That way we can post some stuff. And also let's add some inputs here. So the first input is a text input. Uh, this one is named email. And let's go down here. And this one is of type password and it's going to be named password, of course. So email and password here, great. I'm gonna add some brick tags here just so these are on separate lines like that. And then let me add a button to submit and just say 
maybe we're gonna call it login like this and let me put an h1 tag here for the title login okay cool now I want to add some styling here so that this is in the center so I'm going to make sure I say display block for this and then I can say margin auto that will keep it in the center then let me start with the margin top I'll say margin top um, actually I can say margin auto like this and put margin top after margin top maybe 30 pixels okay great so we have this page here let's see if we can see it somewhere so we have to load it in the browser so I'm going to go to the folder and there is our file so I'm just going to drag and drop it into my browser like this okay very good so this is what we've got now the thing is uh, I want it to be run through the server so what I'm going to do is up to htdocs here htdocs and before I'll replace that with localhost that way the file runs through the server and as you can see nothing seems to have changed which is great let me put two break tags over here I don't know why this uh, margin did not work so let me do this maybe let me try and swap these two okay so this is still not working uh, display block even this margin at the top here doesn't seem to work I want this thing in the center but for some reason it doesn't seem to be working okay so what I'm going to do is let me cover it inside a div maybe that's the reason why oops I went too far there okay so I've put it inside a div and let me just change a few things I'm gonna say style uh, text align center and then change this to inline block uh, margin auto doesn't do anything in this case okay so I have it in the center here which is awesomeness let me put two break tags here as well okay so at least I have two inputs here let me put some placeholders so that we know what each input is about so this one is the email and let's put a placeholder on this one for password like that okay so simple email password and then login okay now we also need to know uh, to have a separate page I guess let me change this to the login page so I guess we need two pages now so I'm gonna go to new file because we need a page that's going to represent let me say this that's gonna represent the um, this one is login.php it's going to represent the rest of the website which determines whether you're logged in or not so let's do this here and this one uh, I'm gonna name it home even though I've swapped these things but this is this is fine here we're going to say I'll put an h1 tag and this one will be home page that's what we're gonna call it let's put some styles text align let's center that okay great now let me swap these because this is the login that's the index.php uh, so I'm gonna copy the content of this one all I'm doing here is swapping the content that's all so I've put this doc type here for the home page and I just want to grab this for the index page like that so that we remain with the home in the index page and then go to the login side here uh, wait 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 yeah so then I can replace that that way on the login page is where we have this code that we typed for the login and on the index page we have this home uh, home page there like so okay so now that we have this let me come back here you see on the index page we have this home page right and let me put a link to to the login page here so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna say um, let's see an a tag 
and I'll say login.php as where it should go and then login page like that and close that tag okay so that on the home page here we can go to the login page by clicking on that all right and right on the login page as well i want another link to take us to the home page that way we can fly through uh, both of these at will so here this one is home page and this one leads to the index.php page okay so essentially what i've created now is let me put uh, a break tag on this one. Maybe I can put this after this form right there. Let's see how that works. Still not good. Let's put a break tag to put it on a separate line like that. All right, so that way I can click on home page and it brings me to the home page and then I can click here to come to the login page. Just a simple uh, website set up here now the thing I want is that when I'm on the home page I should not be logged in until I log in right so I should be redirected back to the login page so that's a simple thing to do now the way we achieve that is we use a thing called a a session right this is what we use so session is a variable that lasts a session now, normally variables in PHP will last until the end of the page, right? So let's put some PHP tags right at the home page here so we can evaluate that. So if, for example, I set a variable right now uh, on this page, it will last the duration of the page. For as long as the page has been run, uh, is run from the top to the bottom, that variable will be set. But then once the page reaches the end or PHP processes the page, then that variable is discarded. But a session lasts for a long time. So you can, you can set a value on this page in the session and it will still be set on the other page here. So if I do this session and say, um, let's call it remember like that. Okay, so remember is equal to hello there like so okay so i've set that in the session now in order to use the session variable you have to start a session so we'll use the session start like that variable okay the function session start so once we set this this is the index page if we go to the login page we can then echo out what's inside the session so let me go here and just say echo session remember now here we are setting it in the index page right so let me not set it yet let me just go to the login.php page and try to echo inside here before we set it okay so if i refresh the page let me go to the login page you see that it says undefined global variable session. So it doesn't know what session is. That's because we need to do session start on every single page that we are using it on. So session start once more. Okay, so it won't say it doesn't know that variable. So now it's a different error. Now this time it's saying undefined array key remember. It's just saying nothing is stored inside that remember key that we are trying to access right but if we go to the index page here and actually set something so back to the home page we set something and if I go back to the login page you see now it says hello there because it said so what I'm try just trying to show is that you can set a value on the home page and then it will still be set by the time you log in you 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 load another page so a session variable lasts longer than the page itself so any page that i open on this particular website will still have that value set so this is how we remember who is logged in we just put some kind of key inside the session and on every single page that key will be available or that value will be available and we can know whether somebody is logged in or not
So it's as simple as that, just setting something in the session for us to know if the user is logged in or not. Okay, now there are two things. So the reason I'm explaining the session here is because there's a second way a session is used and that's using cookies, okay? So what is the difference between session and cookie? So there's another one called cookie like this, okay? So we can also have the same key like remember in here, but since these are two separate variables, obviously they work differently. Now the same way a session knows, because a session has a unique identifier for your browser, that's how it works. So it can identify your browser to know that it's still you, and so it maintains those uh, variables. What it really does internally is that whatever you save in the session is saved on your server as well as a file, okay? So that when you make a new request on a different page, it's going to identify this is the same person. This is because this is the same browser, okay? Same person, same browser. And so it's going to read from that file, whatever variables are in there, it's going to give you back those variables. That's how it maintains uh, those variables on every request. And how does it know that this is the same browser? Well, it saves a cookie on your browser. So automatically your server will save a cookie on your browser whenever you visit any website. And this is how it creates a session. So a cookie is just some information saved on your browser from the server. So that's a cookie. That way it can identify that this is to the same browser. Uh, so every time you make a request, your browser will grab all the cookies that are associated with that domain name that you're trying to access and then send all that information together with your request. And so when the uh, server checks that information, it's going to say, oh, this is still the same user, even though he's on a different page. So let me grab that file, which contains the information he wants and send that back as well. This is how the information is maintained. Now, the good news is you can also set a cookie of your own if you want. You don't have to use sessions here. You can also set, save cookies. Sessions have a lifespan, so they can end after a while. But if you want your website to remember somebody for, let's say, three weeks, then you have to set your own cookie. That way you can set the rules of when that cookie is deleted. Because the session will save a cookie on your browser, but they need to delete it after a while. But if you set your own cookie, then you can set the rules of when it's deleted. It can last a week, a month, or even a year, or even 10 years. That's entirely up to you how long you want that cookie to last. So needless to say, if you save a cookie on somebody's browser, if they reinstall their Windows or they delete that cookie, then that information is no longer there. And also some other things to remember is that a cookie is visible to the user. So don't save any sensitive information in the cookie because somebody can easily just read that information and use it to hack your system or something like that. So unlike session, in session here, when we set a value, we set it just like this, right? But in cookie, we don't do this. We don't do cookie is equal to hello there. This doesn't work. So to set a cookie, we have to use a different function called set cookie like that. So that's the difference here. So we use a function called set cookie and then to read from a cookie, we use cookie like that, just like we do with session. So if you saw with session, we set the value like this and then we echo it out like that. But with cookies, when you want to set your own cookie, you set it like this and then you read it like, uh, let's say echo, something like this. That's how you do it. Okay, great. Now to start with, let's just see how we can log in a user and forget about that. So of course, uh, here we need to put the remember me thing because that's the main thing we want to do here. So checkbox name, remember, we're just going to call it remember like so. Okay. Then we'll say 
remember me over there like so let me put some break tags another break tag like this okay so let me remove all of these things hopefully I've explained enough on this let's do that let's just leave session start because we're gonna need that to check if a user is logged in or not so I'm going to refresh the login page and then we have this remember me over here which we're going to be checking so now if I click login this submits a form and so I just want to check what information is sent here so we'll grab the post variable and I just want to see what is being posted this is all so we're gonna say uh, print readable print r like so and we just want to see what's inside post and we only want to do that if the server detects a post and we do that by checking the request method like so if the request method is equal to post then something was posted so only then should we want to show what is inside the post variable like this okay great so let me get back here refresh the page nothing then me uh, put an email and let's put password doesn't matter your password here let's just click login okay uh, none of that happened server request method wait 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 this is the wrong page sorry my bad so let me cut that get to the login page I'm supposed to do this on the login page right so back here let's refresh and let's log in and let's click login so as you can see here what we receive on the server side is the email and the password okay but we did not receive the remember me so if now I retype this and then I tick the remember me like that and say login now you can see the remember me and it says it's on so for as long as remember me is set it means it was ticked here its value doesn't matter because you've seen that if I don't tick it I don't actually get the whole thing here so for as long as it's there it means it was checked here so that's all we need to check for if it's set the value doesn't matter then it means somebody wants to be remembered okay so we keep that in mind but first of all before we can do that let's just do a basic login so on the index page here um, I just want to check to do a very simple check to see if the user is logged in so in order to do that we're going to do a check inside the session okay because remember session keeps its value over many pages so that's where we should save the information of the user now you can give this key anything you want in my case I like to give it the key user but in this case I'll just do SES short for session it doesn't matter what you put in there really it's up to you so here I'm gonna say if empty right like so meaning it's not set if this is not set then it means we are not logged in so in this case we're going to redirect the user using the header function and we'll say location index dot no no login dot php sorry otherwise would have a would have a if you redirect again to the same page you have an a loop a never-ending loop which might crash your browser actually so careful with that so okay so here what we're doing is we're telling it to exit the function the the script but first redirect and if for some reason the redirect fails let's just end the script so if this is empty then you're not logged in so let's try this it's as simple as that if I go to the home page right now it takes me back to the login page so home page I can't go anymore because I am not logged in as simple as that okay now let's try to log in so that we are allowed in there so in this way what we're going to do is uh, I know here um, there'll be an email and a 
password, right? So all I want to do is put those guys inside a session. That's all. So if I go here and say session and then SES, because that's what we are checking for here. This can be anything. So I'll put it in there and say that is equal to whatever we received in the post variable, right? The whole thing. As simple as that. So once we do this, log in, and then we redirect. We say header, we redirect to our, uh, let's say location, that's our index.php page, like so, and then die. Okay, simple and straightforward. So I'm just adding a value to my session. Here I'm not validating to see whether the email and password were correct or anything like that. I'm just adding something here to show you that once I add something, then I'll be allowed to be here. Okay, so let's get back to business. So I'm going to refresh here and let me try email and password. And then I'm gonna say login. And as simple as that, I am now allowed to be on the homepage because my session data contains something. Now, in order to avoid uh, adding empties here, I'm going to say required and required for the password as well. That way we don't put empty values like that. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Now we need a logout page as well, so we can log out when we need to. So logging out is as simple as checking if the session variable is not empty. So I'm going to say session um, that variable. If not empty, right, then unset. Let me save this as logout.php enter. Okay, so if this is not empty, then unset it. Let me do that. Okay, so once I unset that, then I can redirect the user to the login page. So location, login.php. We don't need to put die here because um, there's no more code after this part here. This is all the, all the code there is. So then I'll go on the index page here and put the logout link right here. So logout. I'll put a pipe there to separate the two. Let's say logout.php. So back here on the index page, if I refresh, there's a logout page now. So if I click on logout, somehow it did not uh, redirect me. Header. <coughs> if not empty, unset. Uh, okay, so it it was empty. And the reason it was empty is because we didn't do session start. So this is very important. Wherever you're using sessions, you should do a session start. Okay, but by the way, we should put the header redirect outside the if statement. That way it redirects no matter what. Okay, so if I refresh again, it comes me, brings me back to this. And when I try to go to the home page, you see I am not allowed anymore because I have indeed logged out. So if I click login, very simple system here, login, I'm allowed to log in now, I'm on the home page. And if I click log out, I'm no longer allowed on the home page. Simple and straightforward. So, so far we haven't used the database to check to see if the email and password are correct and stuff. So let's do that before we can add the remember me here. So I'm gonna go to PHP my admin. So it's localhost slash PHP my admin. Let's see here. So we wanna create a database here that we can actually save information in. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna click on new to create a new database here. So create database and I'm going to call this one remember me as one word uh, underscore db just you can call the database anything it doesn't matter as long as there's no spaces there let's create now of course we need tables so i'm going to create a users table number of columns seems fine i'll say go of course i'll put an id 
because I want this to be the primary key and make sure auto increment is on and it's set to primary key as the index. Leave it at int, that's fine. Then here let's put email as a column name. This will be a variable character of 100 characters in length. The other one is a password. Now when you are going to encrypt your passwords, you will use 255 characters just to be sure the encryption will uh, will be it will be long enough to to accommodate the encrypted uh, password. And after that, let's see email password. That's pretty much it. Um, I guess so. Here we're going to add a token though. So let's do token like that. Now this token will be used for the remember me part as well. So let's put variable character there as well. And let's put maybe, mm, I may put two tokens in here. So I'll just put 500 characters in length just to be sure. Uh, let's see, token. Actually, let's put 255 here. Uh, it's always better to have two tokens, right? The value and the token itself, the key and the value. So I'll explain that just for added security. Uh, let me add one more column here by clicking go like this. So there's a token here, but then we can have a token key as well like that. So token key and token like that. Same thing, 255 like this. So the reason I'm putting a token and a token key, this is like the key to find the row and this is the value to check whether it's valid or not. So we're using this for the remember me, these two, token key and token value. So you can write token key and token value like that to be more specific. Okay, so these guys can be empty. So let's make sure we select the no to allow empty values in here if needed. Okay, so let's save that table. So now we have a users table here, as you can see, awesomeness. Now, since we'll be using the email and token key to read from the database, let's put an index there on the token key and also on the email, since we'll use that as well to check if the uh, login is correct. Now, I don't want to create a whole login and sign up system here. So instead of creating the sign up, I'll enter the data directly into the database. Now, if you want more about login and sign up, I have plenty of tutorials that teach that. In fact, matter of fact, every website we create has a login and sign up system. So you can use those. Now, if I click on the browse here, then I can put some data. So I'll go to the insert. Now it's empty, but let's go to the insert part. The ID is automatic, so don't, don't bother with that. Let's just put email at email.com as the uh, email and let's put password as the password. Let's leave the token and token key empty because those will be set by the remember me thingy. All right then. So if I now click on browse, this is what I have. I have an email, a password and no on these two guys and then an ID for the row ID here. So simple and straightforward. So when we try to log in, we should just look for a record that has this information. Now, just to, to show that um, this thing, to know that it's actually working well, we have to insert at least two records so that we know it's uh, reading from the correct one. So, so Mary at email.com, uh, this one will be password two and let's hit uh, save. So at least now we have two user records here, Mary and email here. Great. ID one, ID two. Right. So now when we try to log in, of course, it should tell us whether the login was correct or not. So here, if I go to the login page and instead of setting this directly in there, what we're going to do is add an if statement. Okay. Now, at this point, we need to be able to connect to the database. Now, what normally we would do is create a functions page 
which we're going to include on every page, which will contain the, uh, the database connection stuff. So maybe let's do that actually. So I'm gonna go to new file in there and put some PHP tags. I'll save this one as functions.php. You can name it anything you want, of course. And I just want to create one function called query, like so. Actually, let me not complicate things. Uh, what I'm gonna do is create a connection only. Let's say MySQL uh, I connect, like so. So to make a connection is very simple. First of all, you enter the host name. In our case, it's localhost. Then you enter the username. In our case, it's root. So if you added a username to your MySQL uh, database, that's what you're gonna use there. And if you added a password, you use it next. Now here, we don't use a password. If you're using mump, you probably need to put root here. And then finally, the database name, which is remember me underscore db. Like that, that is uh, connection is as simple as this. So you can connect to any database, even one that's on the internet right now. It doesn't matter, you can, as long as you put the correct host name, which is the server name in that case. So it could be HTTP slash localhost slash whatever it is. Okay, so here we just wanna check if it doesn't work, let's put uh, failed to connect like that as an error. And then we exit the, let's put an exclamation mark here so that it this only runs if the connection failed. So now that we have that, that's great. Let me go to, uh, I like to create a function. So let me just do it anyway, called query, just so it can run a query for me. I don't like repeating myself on querying something. So here we just receive a query, uh, which is a string. And then let's try to run it here. Now con here will be a value. If everything works well, then we want to grab it by using global con like that, because this brings in a value from the outside into the function. So global con like that, that way we Whenever we say con in here, it knows we are referring to the one outside the function. Okay, so con, we've done a connection, right? Now we've been given a query. We imagine there's a query there, so we need to run that query. So I'm going to do this and say result is equal to MySQLI yeah, query, simple as that. Now, in order to make a query, we have to pass in the connection and the query string itself like that, okay? So if result came in positive like this, if we do get a result, uh, then things are good. Then here, if nothing happens, we just return false like that. So if result now, when the result is just a Boolean or true or false, we don't care about that. But if not is boo, like this, if it's not a Boolean, uh, which means the, because there are two types of queries. There's a query where you, let's say you are inserting data. In that case, you don't, you don't get any result from the database. You're just inserting data. Then there's a query where you are reading data from the database. In that case, you are receiving data. So the result will not be just a Boolean. Okay, it will contain something more than that. And so, uh, wait, is this even the correct place? Yeah, okay. Anyway, we'll see if this works. So if it's not a Boolean, meaning it has some results, and we can say if both these are true, MySQLi num rows is of this result is greater than zero. So if there were some results, this is all I'm just trying to establish here. Then let's do a loop through that result and set it to uh, an array, right? So here we're going to set each result to row. We'll say MySQLi fetch, 
Now we want to fetch an associative array. So we say fetch a sock and we have to pass in that result thingy there. And so we will have an array called, we can call it anything. I'll call it res for short for result and add in that row like that. Now res should be created up here. So I'm just gonna say res is equal to an empty array. And then we add each row to this array. And then finally we return the array. Okay, very simple function, but this is a multi-purpose function because you can save data and read data using this by just passing in the query that you want. So just to simplify our lives. So I'm gonna go to the login here. And of course, now I need to require that file. So I'm gonna say require functions.php like that. That way that function, that page is loaded here as if it's part of the page. Okay, good. So once we get here now, we wanna check first of all, um, I'm gonna call the result a row because I'm expecting a row. But before I do that, I need to grab the email. So that email will come from the post variable email like that. Now for security reasons, in case there are some special characters, I will add slashes to this to make sure it doesn't cause some problems. So email and password both should be in there like that. So we grab an email and the password here. And all we need to do now is create a query. So before I put the row here, I must create a query. And the query string will read, select all columns from the table users where the email column is equal to the email variable. We'll put limit one because we are only expecting, we only want one result. So here we're just saying, the email that the user has supplied, just check if there's a row that matches that. So that's the query string. Now we have to run it. So we run it using that function we created and we'll pass in that query string in there. So all we have to do now is to check if row returned something like that. Okay. Because if you look at the function, if it doesn't return anything, it will return false. So if there's something, it will going to be true. If there's nothing, it will be false. So we just check if, this is the same as saying if raw is equal to true or something like that, or if it's not false or raw is not equal to false, same thing. So if raw, then let's move everything into there. So boom, boom. Now else, we're just gonna do an echo here and say echo wrong email or password. All right, so, but if everything came back correctly, now this thing returns an array of an array because remember there is an array here and each row is an array, okay? So if I just returned one result, for example, the result will be an array, but I'll add it inside an array. So, but what I want really is that's just that single row. So what I'm gonna do is say row is equal to that first result. Okay, great. So now row is directly the row we want. And in here, what we wanna check for uh, is if the password is correct. Now I could say select all from users where email is equal to email and password is equal to password, that, that's fine. But that leaves things open for SQL injection. But for the sake of this tutorial, which is a simplistic one, uh, we can do that actually. So say password is equal to password. But normally just keep in mind that I never do things like this. I will first read, find the email address and then later check if the password matches down here. That way I eliminate the possibility that they will use SQL injection to, to eliminate the password from there anyway. So once we do this, if we find a result, then everything is good. 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab this row and that's what we're going to send inside the session like this and then redirect the user as simple as that okay so let's give it a test and see refresh the page then i'll just put some random text and then click login and you say see wrong email or password hmm? okay great let's try real ones right password like this and then click login and there we go we are logged in simple as that if i log out i'm logged out i can't visit the login page anymore good now what i want us to do is um we make it in such a way that even after i log out i will still be logged in because this is really how the remember me thing works because at some point you'll be logged out but then the moment you load the browser the website is supposed to remember who you are even though you're logged out and then log you in automatically so please keep in mind that these remember me and forgot password thingies are backdoors to your website so extra care must be taken when creating these systems to avoid uh, security holes okay so in our case we're going to try and avoid a few security issues uh, that's that's why i have two tokens in here to try and beat that i won't explain how i'm trying to beat that because that will make the video quite long uh, to explain the process but you're gonna see it anyway Okay, so here, um, once we log in, let's do a logout. And once we log out, we remove that, okay? Now, in the functions place here, we're gonna create a function called check login. So say function check underscore login, like that, okay? Or we can call it is logged in i think that makes more sense it's entirely up to you what you want to do for trial now for a trial we're going to say return false so this is a function that will return true or false depending on whether you're logged in or not so it's a question are you logged in true or false so let's go back to the login here this way instead of let's say let's go to the home page actually instead of checking if this is empty we're just going to add the is logged in function like this so this will always return false as it is which means we're always going to be considered logged out so in this case if i click home page code when defined function is logged in okay the reason is because i did not require the the functions file so functions.php there that's where those functions are so code to undefined function now it will know what the function is so great if i now refresh oh actually we should check if is not logged in so let's put that exclamation point there so refresh and there we go so now i can't go to the home page anymore even if i log in i can't okay so with that in mind now let's set the parameters the rules for when this should return true so the first thing to check is the session data so just like it was if uh, let's say if not empty that's what we're gonna do session right let's uh, like that return true simple as that if that thing is set the session variable is set now you can do more for this for example you can check if it's not empty and it's an array that's another extra feature to check because somebody can just put in any value in this session uh, variable and it will accept it as being logged in so you can do and is array like that session so if it's not empty and it's an array then return true and you can do even more for example you can say uh, if it's an if it's not set and it's an array before you return true you can check to see if uh, not empty for example 
uh, this same variable and then you check for individual stuff that should be there to confirm that this is really a valid row. So you can do quite a lot here. You can say ID is not empty and is numeric or whatever. You can do many tests here, then return true, something like this. So it's entirely up to you how deep you want to go with this to verify that the row in the session is actually valid for the website. So let's see it here. If I refresh and try to go to the home page, this time I'm allowed because everything is met. The if statements were correct. Until I log out, then now I can't go there anymore. So that's great. That's still working. Now, since if I log out now, as I have done, I can't go back to the login page. So I want this to remember still and still be able to go to the login page even when I log out. So how we're going to do that is this. If this part fails, it means there's nothing in the session. So the next phase is to check for a cookie. Okay. So this is where the business of cookieing starts. So first thing we have to do is set the cookie before we can even check. But we can still do the check here, even before we do the code for the setting of that cookie. But maybe let's go in order. So I'm going to go to login page. And here what we're going to do is try to grab the remember me value as well. So it's called remember, right? Now, like you saw in the beginning, it's possible this will not be available. If the user does not tick the remember uh, thingy, this will not be a thing. So before we do any add slashes, it's not necessary for this. We only do the add slashes for things that we're going to use to read from the database for security reasons. So no need for that. We can just say this. Now it's possible this won't be available. So if it's not, let's put two question marks and let's just set it to an, a no value like that. Remember is equal to no. But if it's set, it's going to be equal to on. So as a string. So what we'll do is right above here, before we redirect, right, we'll set a cookie. So we'll say set a cookie. Now this will be dependent if remember is a thing like that. So if remember, meaning the user has ticked for remember to be a thing, let's set a cookie. So we use the set cookie function, of course. Now the set cookie function has two important params, actually three. So here is the key first, then the value, and then the expiry date. So we say expires. And then here we will, there's a thing uh, for domains, for example, uh, because when setting a cookie, you can define which pages that cookie will only apply. So for example, you can say slash, um, slash home like that. So only when you're using it on the slash home page, will that cookie work? If you want it to work on the whole website, you do a slash like this. Okay. Now you may be asking, how did I know all this? Well, Google is your friend. So always Google. There's php.net. You can simply just Google PHP set cookie or just PHP cookie and go to the PHP website documentation. It tells you what set cookie parameters are. So the first one is a string, the name, which is the key. That's the name of the cookie, uh, its value. And when it expires, so the, if it says here is equal to zero, it means this is the default value. So normally it expires at zero, which means if you don't apply any expiry date, that cookie will be invalid because zero is already expired. Now, this is an integer. It says this is an int that you put here. Now, this is the number of seconds from 1970 to today, to right now. How many seconds have passed? So 
Now you may be asking, how do you know that? Well, there's a function in PHP that helps you to gather that information. So for example, if you say time, <coughs> so this function right here, time will give you the number of seconds from 1970 up to right this second. So that's how you grab that information. Then you can add, for example, you want it to expire in a week, right? You can add to this number of seconds. Uh, so you ask yourself, how many seconds make a minute? That's 60. And how many minutes make an hour? That's 60 again. And since now, this is the number of seconds in an hour. But then if we have one hour, we want to know how many hours in a day we multiply by 24. So this is the answer here is the number of seconds in a day. Then you can put all of this in a bracket like that. So that's one day. Then you can multiply by seven, for example. Then this will last seven days. So this very second plus the number of seconds in seven days. So here you can put the number of days you want. If you want, then you can put this whole thing and multiply it by um, how many weeks. Or if you want it to last one year, just put 365 here. Then you have one year of being logged in. But better after seven days, they log in and log out. You can put whatever number of days you want. So that's how you grab that value as an integer. And then there's the string, which is the path. That's where we've put the slash. Okay, that thing here. So this one, I'm going to call it expires. Like that. That's when it expires. Because that's what they, they called it. And then there's a... Okay, so there's a string path. Oh, wait. The string domain? Really? Do I need that? No. This one is for secure. So if you don't need something, the default is an empty string. So you can you can set it to a no value like that. And that's up to you. So uh, this is a Boolean, right? So there's a Boolean here for secure. Now what this means is that if the website doesn't have HTTP, like you can see here, it's HTTPS which is usually most websites now, uh, you can set it so that only when there's an S at the end of the HTTP or if the website is secure, that's the only time you can set that cookie. Now, because we're on localhost, um, it won't work because our localhost isn't a secure connection. And same thing here, uh, you can set this HTTP only. So what this means is that this cookie will only be available when there's an HTTP request happening. This, this is an attempt to, because using JavaScript, a user can check what their cookie is. And if you put the HTTP only to true, then it means JavaScript can't access that cookie. But it shouldn't matter, you know. Uh, just make things secure that into a plate to a point where even if somebody can read your cookie, they can't really do anything with it. <clears throat> so don't save any sensitive information in there. So we don't, I think we can leave the rest of these to default values, really. We don't need any of this, even this. So let's just concentrate on these guys here. That's all I want, just the key, the value, and when it expires, that's it. So I'm gonna grab that put it here. <clears throat> so what will be our value? What are we sending here? And the key, what are we going to call this key? I'll just call it sesh like this, just to match with what I've used here. But literally you can put any text here, doesn't matter. Okay, so now to, to the value. So what do we put here? Now here I want to put two values. I want to put a token value and a token key. So token key and token value. So instead of just one value here, what I'll do is I'll put these two keys together and separate them using a full colon like that. So I'll get token key here and then put a dot to concatenate and another dot and here key value. 
Now, the reason I'm putting, uh, because I can only save one item here. I don't want to start saving arrays in form of JSON. Uh, I'll just save one key here. And then because I know that in this key, there will this character won't be there, the full column. So I can use this as a separator so that when I try to read this information, I can still separate the key from the value easily by just uh, checking where the semicolon is, then I'll know this side is the value, this side is the key. And then there when it expires, right? So, so how do I create a token key? So this is up to you what you want to add here. It doesn't matter, really. You can add any string. It doesn't matter. You can say, yeah. Just don't put any sensitive, don't put an ID because you could just say uh, the key is the user ID, for example, user one like this, and then the token could be uh, maybe the word logged in or something. Some people, what they do is they just grab just one token and then just put the user ID and then encrypt it. Now, this is not very good security because somebody can try that. They can just encrypt numbers and use that as a token because they can easily add that token to their to their browser and then they will be logged in like that. So that's a security flaw which we should never do. So instead what we're going to do is maybe let's just guess the time at this point. It doesn't really matter what character we put here at the end of the day. So I'm just going to say what time because this value, this always returns a unique value because time never goes backwards. It always goes forward. So this value will always be unique. So you can use that. Then, because it's possible that somebody can try to guess that it's a time code that you added there, which is in form of numbers. So they may decrypt that if they want, which I don't know if that matters or not. So you can create what is known as a salt. Uh, but all of these things don't really matter that much. It's just... So your salt can be anything, just some text to saturate the time variable because somebody can guess this, but they may not guess what you added to it, right? A salt. So you can just call it my salt. It doesn't really matter. You can put symbols there to make it like a stronger password or something. So we're going to say star and uh, salt and then just some weird symbols. It doesn't matter. Then at the end of the day, we grab that and add it to this plus salt. Same with the value, right? Plus salt. Like that. So no biggie. So there's a token and a value. Both of these can be time. But the problem is if I put time here, then they'll look pretty much the same when encrypted. So that's not a log good idea. So we just leave it with logged in as some text. You can put some capital letters there, some numbers. It's up to you. Then we encrypt this value like this. So we use the function called hash like that. So you tell it what algorithm you want to use. I want to use the SHA-256 and then the data that you want to encrypt. So I'm going to grab that data and put it in here like so right so don't worry too much about these extra steps the bottom line here is that we're just grabbing any value called the key and then we are hashing it that's all here you can even put you don't need all of this you can just say like that it doesn't really matter then you hash it it doesn't matter but for some reason uh, this looks like more maybe more secure but don't sweat it is my point so let me grab this one here. Let's do that. And do hash as well. And do SHA-256. And let's grab that. Let's put it here. Okay, great. Right. So we have a token key. We have a value. And then, um, yeah, we save those. And that's it. Simple and straightforward. Right. Goody. So let's try that. So now if we go back here to remember me, I'll type in my email and I'll type my password. Put remember me there and log in. Oh, wrong email and password. Ah, okay, email, pa 
password remember me log in okay oh sorry this is insane you see this is what you get for <laughs> for using two languages mostly so this is javascript syntax sorry about that you put a dot here instead of a plus my bad okay so back again let's let's resend the data resend and there it is so now our cookie has been saved now how do we see the cookie let's go to the index page here um we can simply echo it out and say cookie session look at this okay so if i now refresh this is the cookie we saved look at that very random text here and then the semicolon we added and some more random text so one of these is our key the other one is the value right key and value and semicolon there okay so great now we saved it in the cookie but we need to save it in the user's uh, row whichever that user is that signed up or logged in those things should be set in there so that's one thing we didn't do so let's do that so back to the login the reason we want to save it so we can compare it later to see if this is legit or not so this is why it doesn't really matter what you type in there as long as it's hashed that's better and uh, let's see here uh, set cookie okay great so finally we'll do a query over here like this okay now we already know this row that the user that we logged in as so we have their id here so let's create a query that will do that for us so query is equal to we want to update now normally if your website is huge and you have a lot of users you may instead create a separate table to do the tokens to save these tokens and then the, on that extra table you're going to have token value and token key and then user id and then the id of the row so there'll be the id user id token key and token value that way you can put the id of the user that those tokens belong to that's how you can match them uh, the reason to do that is just to avoid uh, updating the user's uh, table often but this is fine as well it's not a big deal though but you might want to do it that way so update users set token key is equal to then here we're gonna have token key and then comma token value is equal to token value like that let me put a semicolon yeah then i can concatenate to the query so dot equals don't forget that dot there because we are adding to the query yeah leave a space there make sure there's a space so update users set that 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 here i can leave another space and say where id is equal to uh, id so here i'm going to put an id like that and say limit one now we don't know what id is so we're going to grab it from the row so let's say id is equal to row id like that okay which is whatever row we logged in as so all we need to do now is run that query and put it in there like so. goody right so let's try another login so i'm going to go log out and email and password and click remember me and log in okay so we've added new information all we want to know now is that was it added to the table and sure enough it was so there's a value and a key okay very nice so now when we log out let's see if it's going to remember us right so I'm going to go to my index page and remove this echo of the cookie. I'm going to just mute it for now. And let me come back here and refresh. Now let me log out. 
Now, if I try to go back to the home page, I'm not remembered at all. So let's fix that. So I'm going to grab this. If I go to the functions, and this is the one that questions if you're logged in or not. Uh, check for a cookie, right? So I'm going to say cookie is equal to this. Now it's possible that this cookie could be empty, right? Maybe it expired or something. So, by the way, to delete a cookie, uh, if you want to, if you want to know that, the process of deleting a cookie is exactly like this, setting a cookie. You use set cookie, you put the same value, uh, doesn't matter, you put the same key, doesn't matter what value you put, you can put an empty value actually. The key is to put the expiry date to a time that has already passed. So here when you say expires, instead of a plus, you can put a minus like this. So that will subtract from the current time, which will mean this token is expired. So just by expiring it, that's how you delete a cookie, actually. Okay, just a side note there. Okay, so let's come back here. Let's see, cookie, set cookie. It's possible this cookie does not exist. So if it doesn't, let's put null over there like that. And then we'll say if there is a cookie. Um, if cookie. Okay, so let's grab the token value. Token key is equal to. So what I want to do is explode that thing. I'll say parts is equal to explode uh, this thing here and the cookie. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling it to create an array uh, on the value of the cookie, right? And separate it by the full colon. So I know the first part is the key, the second part is the value. Okay, so if this worked out, parts should be an array that contains two items. So here I can make sure that this exists in the cookie string by saying if cookie and string, string, like that. So the haystack is where you're looking. So this is how you search for a string within a string. So what am I searching for? The full column. So if there's a cookie and it contains uh, a full column, then we are good to go. So which means we can do the explosion here and then the this one will be equal to parts zero, which is the first part. And sorry about that. This one will be parts one, which is the value. So there'll be two items in this array called parts. Uh, the first part is the key, the second part is the value. Okay, good. So now we have these two strings as we need. All we need to do now is read from the database to see if there's a there's one part that contains the token key and the token value. Okay, so let's create a query. So we're going to say select all from users where token key, we just want to use the token key is equal to token key, limit one. So you make sure you limit one, so it's only searches for one result. Because there are some clever hackers that will listen to how long it takes your database to read a record, and just by that they can tell what record you're trying to read. So. We limit one so that as soon as it finds one result, it just exits. Okay, so once we grab that token, oh, by the way, we have to read that from a row. So we'll say row query and run that query. Okay, now if, for example, row returned something, then we grab the first result from there. And then once we do that, we can now compare the token values. So we'll say if token just extra security is equal to 
the token in the row. So row token value. Then this means everything went well. So at this point, we are sure that this user was logged in before. So what we're going to do is return true at this point, right? So we are checking through to see if a cookie exists. And if it does, we try to read from the database to see if there's corresponding data that matches that cookie. And then if it does, we return true. But the problem is here, we haven't set a value in this session yet. And so it means every time we say is logged in, it will always go to this part. Now we don't want it to reach here. We just want it to end there. So what we need to do now is set this value. That way, the next time it asks this question, it's going to return true from here. That way we avoid do doing all this laborious work down here. So before we return, we set that to the row like this. Okay, that way next time it ends there. Cool. So just to know that uh, where it ended up, we can say echo here. I just want to see, uh, anyway, you can do these echoes and stuff. Uh, actually to redirect, so we won't even see this, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's see if it works though. So I'm here, I haven't logged in, right? I'm logged out. So if I click on home page, if everything goes well, I should actually be allowed because I'm remembered. So if I click on home page, look at that. And now, if I go to my home page, I have to make sure that um, the session data exists now, right? So let me come back here and refresh. Array to string conversion. Okay, that's because I'm trying to echo an array, which means it exists. So I'm going to say print readable. I just want to see what's inside the session. So wait, what? What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, there you see our user role is there. And let me do the same on the login page, right? If I go to the login page, I want right here to echo the session data. So if I now log out and go to the login page, you see now it says undefined key session, which means here I'm completely logged out now. Session does not exist. But if I click home page, go to the home page and define keys. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Session, session. Ah, the reason it does that is because you have to refresh for the session data to be available. So if I refresh, it's available now. So it's working as intended. So let me remove that. The reason is that here I se I'm setting the session. Where am I setting that session from? Uh, wait, 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 wait on the index page. Oh, I'm setting that in the functions page. Where is this? Here. So once I set it here, whatever value I set here, uh, will only be available when I refresh the page. That's because sessions are set only when you're sending the headers. So once the page is loaded, the headers have already been sent. So on the next refresh, that's when you see the value. That's how sessions work. Anyway, the bottom line is everything works fine now. Let me go back to the home page, remove this. And refresh. So now all you need to do is on every page where you need the user to be logged in, you just put this code there. Don't forget this. In fact, all of this should be there on every page that you want security of a logged in user. It's as simple as that. So hopefully you have learned something here. Let's do a little recap. This is a logout page. Nothing to see here. All we do is empty the session data and redirect to the login page so we can remove that. There's a login page where we just log in, right? And then if the remember me was ticked, uh, 
we add a cookie there okay we add a cookie and we set it to seven days we add a salt just to to uh, make this thing not so precise because this time thing we are saving contains only integers so we want to add special characters blah 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 so that if someone wants to decrypt it eh, it's going to throw them off a little bit it's easy to decrypt just numbers so then they may discover your system that you are using but by putting a salt that is strong like this you can throw them off a little bit then here you save a value these don't even matter. What you put here doesn't matter really. It's just a, an encrypted value that you save in your database by using this algorithm to encrypt. So you can also use, instead of this, you can use the latest, which is password hash, like this. Yeah. And then you put your string in there, like so. This will make sure that you... Uh, you use the latest encryption, uh, but this is overkill, so that's why I didn't use this. This is too much. You don't need all that. You can use SHA-256. That's good enough. Nobody's going to be trying to do that on your website, to hack your website, unless you have government secrets there. If you do have government secrets on your website, then use the password hash, and then you're going to use the password verify to know if it's the correct encryption there. But yeah. At the end of the day this is what it is so we create a cookie here set the cookie and save the information in the database and then every time we check for a log if the user is logged in we'll first check in the session if they don't have a session variable then we check for a cookie cookie is last resort if they don't have a cookie then we return false completely all right so there you have it log out now the thing is if i even even when i log out right now and i try to go to the home page i'm still allowed so which means in this current situation logging out is not uh doesn't work anymore because i can log out and still just come back but i wanted to if i did click the log out button to permanently delete the cookie as well so what we're gonna do here is this Let's go to the logout session here. Like I said, we only need, let's go to the login here. We just need this function, set cookie. And let's go to the logout page. So once we unset this guy, then let's also set a cookie exactly here. It doesn't matter what value we add here. So I'm just gonna add an empty string, but the expiry date is what matters. So I'm gonna say time like that and then minus doesn't really matter what value I put in here. I can just say minus 1000. Still, even minus one will work because then it's one second ago when this cookie expired, right? So you can put whatever number here you want, how big you want it, doesn't matter. This is just an expiry. So let's check this out if this is gonna work this time. So if I go back to the homepage, I'm still allowed, right? Now, if I log out, and try to go to the home page i can't anymore because i have indeed logged out okay that cookie has expired so it's no longer valid but if i did not log out even when i closed my browser and come back i'll still have a cookie that's not expired so it's going to work just fine all right so hopefully you have learned something on how to create this remember me function on your website if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll answer them. Otherwise, I'll see you in another tutorial.